Okay, so let's move on to the trick ending. Was what Beatrice did magic or trick? Let's try a trick. If your answer is magic, open this door. If it's a trick, then open that door. I had already decided upon my answer. This is my answer. I walked over the door that represented the answer I had chosen. Then I put the golden key into the keyhole and turned to face everyone. Yushimi Eagle never looks back. That's right. Sorry. I gripped the key tightly and twisted. Then the key in the door flashed brilliantly and slowly faded away. Beyond the door was a strangely colored space. If I step into this, I'll reach the future I chose. Before taking that single step, I spoke without turning back. Thanks for calling Kirby, Lork. Is this the first decision in the visual novel? Uh, episode 8 is special. There's three points in the game where you can make decisions. Although this is the only one that actually really changes the outcome of something. Because we had the, the Halloween party, we had Burn Castell's puzzle, and then now we have the ending. The Yushimi Eagle never turns back, so I won't turn around, but I'll say this. Thank you, everyone. But this isn't goodbye. I'll always be with you all. Yeah. You won't turn back. I will always be standing behind you. That's not what I mean. Despite it all, I still believe. I'm positive that everyone will come back. And... That is good. Ange, I look forward to the day where we all meet again. Ange, my adorable granddaughter. We may be away for some time. Here, don't forget this. It's your prize from that quiz party. A gold butterfly flew over my shoulder, landed on my palm and turned into a Beatrice doll. This was lying next to me when I woke up on the sofa, wasn't it? This was my prize. Take it back to the future with you and treasure it. Thanks, everyone. I took a step forward. Forward into the future. I won't say goodbye. So, see you later. We'll always be together. A strong wind blew through my hair. My nose was filled with the smell of the sea. I must have been standing still for a very long time. This is a point cutting through the sea. I was standing on the bow of a boat. I was still holding that thing. You know, they mean the Beatrice doll, but because it could be one of like 17 different objects, that's why they don't say it directly. Lady, if you stand around there too long, you'll freeze. I'm a Kusa. So this is... Captain Kawabata's face peered out at her. You can see it now! That's the old Ushimiya family dock! Ooh! Not even a trace of it left! I see. So I've come back here. It's been a really long daydream. No. A long and windy side trip. Or windy, I guess. No matter what sort of tales are woven or written about the past, they have nothing to do with my tale, the future. I swore to live life looking only at the future without turning back. If swearing that has a purpose, then this hasn't all been just a daydream. And besides, I've brought many things back with me from that long side trip. Some of those are even immediately useful. But yeah, this isn't going to do me much good. 
I threw a Beatrice doll into the ocean. What was that? My regrets. I've shed my old shell. So with the old Rokunjima right in front of you, you're having a change of heart? That's not what I mean. I mean I've had enough of being human. Huh? I won't waste that long journey. I now have a new way to live. And that isn't as the human called Ushimiya Ange. I am reborn. Captain, sorry, but would you mind leaving for a second? Huh? Sure, whatever you say. Captain Kawabata went down to the driver's area. What is it, lady? Why the troubled face? I feel like taking a step into a new life. You already have. True. If I could sell off all the Ushimi family wealth that's burdening me, maybe donating it to some charity, that would be a huge relief. Then I'd finally be able to escape from the shell called Ushimi Ange. It seems a waste of all that money. You could do anything you wanted with it. Who cares? My point is that I don't need it. That may be true, but then again, not everything that you'd be selling off belongs to you exclusively. For example... Are you talking about the Ushimiya group stock? That's right. They may be a little more than scraps of paper to you, but doing something like that could shatter the whole company. I don't think my boss could bear to have that happen. Yeah, I know. It's like that for the Sumideras and the President Okonogi alike. There are plenty of people who are in a tough spot because I can do as I please. There's no doubt you're a VIP, Ange son. Wouldn't it be better to chill out and hide away for now and just hold off on doing anything flashy? What would be the fastest and most convenient way to prevent this VIP from doing as she pleases, I wonder? Hey, that's a good question. Well, we could break out the drinks, tell each other our deepest secrets, and... Anyone could guess that the final destination of my journey is Rokunjima. Right now, Rokunjima is completely uninhabited. There's no one there. No one to see or to hear. This is the perfect day for a closed room. Well, yeah, that may be true. The Sumadera family's chasing me. They even managed to barge into President Okonogi's building with perfect timing. Someone leaked the fact that I was there. Are you saying my boss sold you out? Then why would he give you a bodyguard? Since he doesn't know what sort of whims I'm going to- Or since he doesn't know what sort of whims I'm going to act on. President Okonogi wants to have both the Sumadera family and me indebted to him. That way he could sell information about me, let me slip away by a hair, and keep track of my whereabouts, putting both me and the Sumadera family in his debt while keeping a trump card in his hand. You're definitely overthinking things there. Amakusa wore a forced smile trying to smooth things over. We can be sure that the Sumadera family is chasing me. My actions are being intentionally leaked to them. Then we'll bump into each other in Rokunjima. <laughs> oh, sorry, this is still her. Then we'll bump into each other in Rokunjima. I will be killed by them. After that, you will kill the Sumadera hitmen. And President Okonogi will have a trump card to use in negotiations with the Sumaderas. If I die, the Ushimiya group will be stable for the time being. Plus, they'll be able to draw the line with the Sumadera family. On the other side, the Sumadera family itself will be able to neatly do away with Aunt Kasumi, the leader of their over-enthusiastic radical faction. Both sides will finish their bargaining with a draw, and everyone will be happy. Oh, that's a pretty interesting story you've got up there. That golf bag you brought with you. I've had a look at what's inside. Are you planning to start a war or something with all those guns? But it had a sniper rifle in it. Would a bodyguard who's always by my side really need something like that? Well, you never know what might happen. Why would a bodyguard who works best when traveling light choose to abandon his position for a whole day to get a gun like that and right before we leave for Rokunjima? Lady, you're overthinking this, okay? When I reach Rokunjima, 
You'll suggest I go visit the place they died or something, getting me on my own. That's the bait. The bait to lure in Sumadera Kasumi and the others waiting for me on Rokunjima. After that, you'll use that ridiculously huge gun to round them up. The end. Well, what's wrong with rounding them up? Isn't that what a guard's supposed to do? In addition to a cutting-edge sniper rifle, you also had a modern German submachine gun. Those are really handy. No matter how many people the Sumaderas have, I could clean them all up, no trouble. There was one more. A handgun. Even though the sniper rifle and the submachine gun were the best and newest models, the handgun alone was beat up and old-fashioned. See? Ange pulled out the handgun and pointed it at Amakusa. Uh, cut it out! Uh, this isn't funny! A handgun is something you're always supposed to have on your person, right? So why would you go and get a second handgun in such an unusually old one? One theory can explain this. What if it's the same kind of gun Sumidera Kasumi and the others are using? This is a Tokarev! A gun once used by the Soviet military, and which have gotten pretty popular in the Japanese underground. Oh, oh this is Ange again. This is a Tokarev. A gun once used by the Soviet military, and which has gotten pretty popular in the Japanese underground. It's exactly the sort of weapon that Sumideras might be using. Also, having Sumidera Kasumi die would be convenient for the Sumidera family as well. They could have leaked, no, exchanged information on their end as well. Therefore, it's possible that you knew beforehand the Sumadera hitmen would be using Tokarevs. Amakusa was speechless. Was he speechless because this was all true? Or because he was stunned by the determination with which Ange pointed that gun at him? The plan that you... No, the plan that all of you made together. It was to use me as bait to lure Kumis Sumadera Kasubi to an uninhabited island, setting it up so both sides appear to finish each other off. Hey, Aru! Welcome to the stream! Thank you so much for coming by today! Thank you so much for the sub! I really appreciate it! 18 months! That's incredible! Yeah, that means we have a Twitch baby now, don't we? <laughs> I really appreciate all your support. Thank you, thank you for coming by. And settling everything nice and neat for both President Okonoki and the Sumidera family. A single line of cold sweat dripped down Amakusa's forehead. With the winds whipping through her hair, Ange spoke coldly. Just by the presence of this handgun, see how far Ushimi Ange's reasoning has taken her. What do you think, everyone? You haven't taken the safety off. I know. Tokarevs don't have a safety. Oh yeah, that was a tier 3 sub R. Wow, wow. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, that means you get all the emotes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah, you get the Kirby staring emote. <laughs> I made it more for myself, knowing that most people wouldn't be doing a tier 2 or 3 sub, so I kind of put that one there for me, but now you get both. You could Kirby stare as much as you want. Amakusa tried to dive behind cover, but he couldn't outrun a bullet. It shot into his gut, making him double over in pain. And she knew that he had a gun hidden in his pocket, then eliminated his chances of a counterattack. Blood spurted from Aokusa's forehead, and he did not close his eyes again. And there's a perfect, certain way to confirm someone's death without a doctor, and it's the easiest one in the world. You! <gasps> Kawabata stuck his head out, and his face went pale when he saw the gruesome scene on the deck. This time, Ange pointed the barrel of the gun at his forehead. Before we left, you said you needed a bit more time to get the boat ready. However, if you've been bought, then we could say for sure that you were buying time, so that Sumadera Kasumi could set up her ambush on Rokunjima. I have no idea what you're talking about! You're a cat box inside of which is a Kawabata who's bought and betrayed me. 
and a Kawabata who hasn't betrayed me. Now then, how can I kill the one who betrayed me? Uh, stop! D don't shoot! I just have to shoot the whole cat box to death. The boat's owner slumped over backwards and fell. Then with the second bullet, she performed a perfect examination of his corpse. She had survived. Surely she had survived the web-like conspiracy that had been wrapped around her so cleverly. Ange returned to the bow of the boat, faced the strong winds head-on and peered into the future in front of her. The boat whose owner was gone, headed towards the endless horizon, on and on in a straight line. She prayed the truth she truly desired to reach lay before her. And then she heard the sound of clapping. The sound of clapping on a boat where Amakusa and the captain were no more. However, Ange didn't look surprised. She calmly and slowly turned around. Splendid reasoning, comrade Ange. My fellow witch of truth, Ange Beatrice. Oh, you're here, Erica. Anytime someone wants to expose the truth, you'll find me there. <laughs> hey, Erica. Or, <laughs> hey, Erica. What? The boat had already passed by Rokujima. The island's silhouette was now off in the distance. The boat headed towards the endless horizon, continuing on its endless journey. The new Witch of Truth announced the beginning of this endless journey to her fellow witch. I'll carve out my future in my own way. Sounds splendid. At the end, will there be a truth for me to find? Just what sort of truth could you be looking for after all this? Hmm. You're right. I know the truth isn't worth anything. And there's one more thing I figured out. What's that? That bewildered look on Amakusa's face when his scheme was exposed. That was pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, all of the goats. Yep. That was basically the Ange Becomes Erica ending. That was the bad ending. Because if you think about it, like the whole the whole thing of Battler's game, right? Choosing magic or trick is basically asking Ange, do you believe in magic? And remember, magic in Umaneko is the metaphor about how you can have your own personal individual truth without needing 
someone else's truth as well. Multiple simultaneous truths can exist. And so doing the trick ending here also doesn't unlock the tea party or the question mark, question mark, question mark. Hey Gamma, welcome to the stream. Thanks for coming by. It's good to see you. So that's like what they're trying to tell us here with this ending. So of course that trick ending is a lot shorter than the magic ending because the magic ending is much better. So we're going to go do the magic ending now.